Danielle Keane. I'm a content editor at the Institute of Export and International Trade. And today we are here at Brand Organic, one of our members, to talk about their experience of scaling their import agency so that they can bring these fantastic products to the UK market. My name is Tom Campbell Smart. I'm the Operations Director at Brand Organic. We import natural and organic brands from all around the world and we sell primarily into the UK retail market. We started in 2018. It was founded by my business partner, Martin. He had a long background in independent retail, wholesale, uh, very much has been in natural and organic products for a number of years. Whilst working in wholesale, he saw a number of brands launch into the UK and make the same mistakes effectively. So he set up Brand Organic in September 2018 in order to act as a brokerage company to help brands navigate the UK's retail market and not fall into the same pitfalls that he'd seen so many others fall into. I then joined in April about six months later and yeah, the rest is history. We obviously started as a brokerage company. We helped brands, we didn't handle any goods. So we would negotiate deals, we would help people plan their marketing, their strategy in the UK. And then, you know, this little thing called Brexit happened. And whilst wading through the legislation that came out and the law that was gonna be implemented, Martin and I were sat round a table and realized that we, we didn't have a business particularly. Because the UK was gonna become its own third country, goods could no longer just freely pass from the EU and someone had to really be in the middle as an intermediary and take that legal responsibility. So we realized this in 2020. So in 2021, we learned to import. That was when I first landed upon the Institute of Export. We registered as a food business with our local authority, East Hans, and I remember they came round to my house because we were a remote business, had an inspection, and he said, you need some training. You know, you, I said, well, I've gone through the government. He said, no, 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 you need some training. So part of my improvements by the local authority was to attend some sort of developed course on importing. I went via the Institute of Export, and that was when we really improved our processes, and we did it step by step. And eventually we, we built up, we built our capacity, we found the right partners, the right freight forwarders, the right import agents. And between Martin and I in, in 2021, I think we did 10 imports, small scale, single pallet stuff sold them into you know, companies that we were originally brokering on behalf of. That went pretty well, and then in 2022, scaled further. So 2022 was when we really started taking on staff. So we were scaled to about 10 per month, and we grew from a team of two to a team of six pretty quickly over the course of 2022. Started taking on established brands who started to realize that Brexit was happening, and that these changes were coming, and that they needed an importer or the right UK company. And yeah, we are now a team of eight, growing at a fair old pace. We now represent 15 brands in the UK. The portfolio does change. We have some developed brands that have been in the UK for 10, 15 years that then needed an importer in transition to Brand Organic. We have other brands that are completely new to market and want to utilize Brand Organic and its team to penetrate that UK retail market quickly and effectively. It was actually an import in our very early days that brought me to the Institute's helpline. We had an order from a customer and they'd ordered raspberries, which was nothing untoward and nothing out of the ordinary. However, when it got picked up by the forwarder, the agent sort of got in touch with the exporter and said, these raspberries originate from, from Ukraine. And we thought, well, why is that a problem? And of course, you know, the conflict had gone on. The EU and the UK had passed a lot of very fast legislation to say that purchasing from Ukraine came with some needs to verify that the goods had not been purchased from Russian controlled parts. Now, I say that with hindsight because I now know the answer, but when the freight forwarder, my exporter got in touch and said, they're not letting us move the goods because the raspberries are from Ukraine, that was all the information I had. So I'm sat there Googling and then I just suddenly thought, well, why, why don't I give the Institute a call? Two or three hours later, I've spoken to the helpline, they've called me back. And lo and behold, I just needed to pass back the information to my exporter that they needed to amend their invoice with an exporter's declaration saying that, you know, they had purchased this from non-Russian controlled territories. That one incident was so worthwhile. You know, within six hours, 
of having a problem that I had no idea how to solve. I'd realised that the problem wasn't huge, it was minor. We'd had alterations made and, and there was no hold up whatsoever and the delivery wasn't late. So in terms of my whole experience using the helpline, you know, I couldn't recommend it enough. In terms of the, the other member benefits, I mean, I've, I've said that we use the training and have used the training. The international trade T's and C's we review regularly. We ensure that, you know, our contracts are all legally written, but I make sure that they're cross-referenced with that. The HR tools that are basically there for free as part of your membership. Our business support manager um, has relied on heavily, which is remarkably valuable for a small business growing fast. Most of the team are subscribed to the lunchtime learning webinars. In terms of it as a resource and knowledge base, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. If I was to give advice to anyone starting an import-export journey, I think the advice would be to talk to as many people as possible. And I think I've heard this mentioned a lot before. I heard it mentioned at the Import Export Show. Talk to your local council, talk to trade advisors, talk to anyone that will you know, help you. Talk to the Institute, um, talk to other businesses, become part of a community like the Institute is, and don't give up. The world of trade can be made to look very complicated. It is at times, but often it's very simple. And actually finding the simple solution can just sometimes take some time. I think some of our biggest challenges have been finding the right freight forwarder, finding the right partner. It's about working with the right people that fit in line with your business aims and goals.